Um, in some areas, it's less problematic. In other, in other areas, human rights or needs and desires are more intensely involved. In the area of family planning and reproductive health, you're not dealing with, in malaria, you're dealing with something very straightforward. Malaria is a disease. It kills people. People don't want to die. So therefore, you know, even in that area, in areas like that, a more targeted approach is less, is less complicated. I'm sure there are problems I don't know about it, but it's certainly less complicated. In the area of human sexuality and reproductive behavior, much more is at stake in terms of how each individual and couple looks at the role that fertility and children play in their lives. And so we, needed, we need a different set of measures and a different mindset for how we deal with that area um, if we want to behave in ways and, and initiate programs that are more, that are ethical, that are sensitive to human need, and sensitive to people's rights. We can debate um, the extent to which reproduction is a right. Um, and, you know, it's a very fascinating area of debate for me, maybe not for others, but, you know, that's, that's what I get paid to do um, and what I like to do. Um, but generally speaking, if one is even looking at this in, in the sense that Cairo did of of how you can successfully and ethically reduce population size and slow population growth in order to achieve other objectives, get the alleviation of poverty, preservation of the environment, healthier lives for women and children, all of those goods that we believe then taking a look at how we were delivering in 1994 was a marker for how we would begin to construct these programs differently. Following 1994, 1994 and, and this, this, this whole shift was opposed by the right. Okay, this was not opposed by the demographers. This was not opposed by the environmentalists. This was opposed by the right wing. It was opposed by certain countries that were more to the right, uh, from the Central American countries were very prominent in this, was definitely opposed by um, the Vatican, which holds a unique status in the UN and played a very strong role in attempting to prevent Cairo from going too far. Uh, and although <coughs> in a conceptual framework, the shift that was made should have been a shift that religion embraced totally because it was a shift that put the focus on the human being and the dignity of the human being, which is what religion has always said it is about. It's always said it is about. Um, as opposed to uh, a mechanistic approach in which human beings are instruments of other people's desires, needs, goals, etc. But, you know, that wasn't the way it turned out. And so one of the major areas where Cairo failed, um, I, I mentioned some where it succeeded, but some of the major areas where it failed was on the issue of abortion. It was absolutely impossible to move forward on the issue of safe abortion, although everyone, of course, recognizes the role that unsafe abortion plays in maternal mortality and morbidity. And so certain frames around abortion became in further enshrined in the way we think at Cairo. Uh, abortion should never be promoted as a means of birth control. Okay, and you see this, see this repeated in, a, a, and this becomes a kind of a surrogate for women are irresponsible human beings. This is what it's about. Who uses abortion as a means of birth control? What, what does that phrase mean? We could unpack it. But it was the idea that we can't trust women with their fertility. With their fertility. Um, and, and so abortion was off the Cairo agenda. 